we gather to sing all his praises we gather to worship the king we gather to hear of his precious love his grace into all lives he Well, good morning. It's a joy to be here today, and uh, it's uh, we have a message here in Romans from the wonderful servant Paul that has a message for us today. If you want to look in your Bibles and find it, it's in Romans chapter 1, and we're going to read just one verse. We do have one verse we're going to share along with that in just a moment, but as far as our text today, it'll be Romans 1 verse 16. Romans 1, verse 16. And it is a joy to be here today and share. As we've worshiped already, we'll continue through the worship as we look into God's Word and what He has for us today. Let's share a prayer together. Father God, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here and worship. We ask that you uh, uh, give us a message today, Lord, for this time. And Lord, I pray that I'll be used in the proper way and I am an instrument for these moments. And, Lord, to properly convey the message you've given me and laid upon my heart. Lord, I pray as those that are watch us today and uh, see this message, I pray that there will be decisions made for salvation or for service and within our fellowship here. Allow us to open our hearts for what you have for us. Lord, we thank you for your word, Lord. Let us be faithful in sharing it, teaching it, and preaching it, and be people of truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Again, as we look at the writing of Paul, just for a moment as intro, Paul has given the introduction. And you know in Paul's writings, he gives usually in, in, in all the letters that he wrote, he would give words such as grace to you or, or peace be to you. Because you have to remember, sometimes many people uh, don't understand the, the layout of that, of how that is occurred. Paul has made the journeys, and then Paul is writing letters back to them to help them and encourage them in the faith. And so as we look at here, um, Paul has, in these verses, he has a longing to visit Rome. And you study it out. And in the context of where the scripture is given, Paul is having a longing to visit Rome. Now, it's the, church, it's, it's the Romans' letter but he has a longing here to read. He says just above our text today, he said, I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong. Isn't that wonderful? Here's a person who was a missionary who was sharing, who felt the real call. And we know when Paul saw who became Paul, as you've heard me share before, and I don't mind repeating it again, that many people don't really connect to how much that changed in a sense, there was the change of salvation, but the same fervor, the same energy, the same, just, he did everything he could as Saul to destroy the cause of Christ. And I believe in all that same uh, energy and heart, Paul then turned his energy to serving his Savior. And that's why, as he read and as he walked and shared, he would write back with the heart to help these believers. Notice what he said here again. I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong so that you will be mutually, it goes a little further, and to say that you will mutually be encouraged. Isn't that wonderful? To know that the Apostle Paul had concern for those believers to share that. Now as he moves a little further in the background of this first chapter, he comes down to what he considers, or I believe, Paul says a wonderful verse that you will see all the way through his ministry. 
And you can see it when he faced uh, the most common people. He would face religious leaders who were ready to persecute him. And he shared it with these churches. And he wanted to see people changed. And he see, shares it in verse 16. This is our theme for today. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew and then to the Gentile. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. I wanted to continue on there with that verse because it talked about the power and the righteousness, the gospel, the righteousness. This would be Paul's theme verse in the preaching, in his preaching. As you study his life, and you see, he said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. He preached it. He was faithful to do that on any occasion. As Paul would go into cities, Paul would not go in and check the best of lodgings, would he? He wouldn't, would he? Because he knew, guess what? <laughs> I may end up in jail. But he did it in love. And he did it with grace. He did it with mercy. But yet he, pre he presented the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel that changed him, he wanted to see change. And he said, I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And we're going to talk about that today a little bit, about that idea of the gospel, the power that Paul conveys here that is in the gospel, that is in many times in our preaching forgotten today, in our teaching and in our churches. Matter of fact, to the comment almost, preacher, don't preach too heavy on that because that might offend someone. And it is said that way, not, not in our church. And, but, but sometimes people will say, no, uh, be, with, be with this idea over here or help over here in this. But a person must hear the message. Paul preached the power of the gospel. And I want you to see this. He said he wasn't ashamed of it. I remember a, a story years ago in my ministry. A gentleman locally here, actually, in, in, in our area. He's in heaven now. Faithful, faithful Christian. Had such a heart for uh, young people, young men really in the ministry. And I'll never forget one day, I was in my 20s, and I didn't ever realize I did this. And I came up to him, and he just taught the old lessons of life sometimes. Sometimes they're hard. You know, and he didn't mean a thing by it. But I was I was learning. I was learning work in people. God called me to preach when I was 16, and 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 I'd been out there. I helped. I worked with a staff that helped start a church when I was 18, and that was the Lord. But in doing all that, I was young. So you're you're constantly learning. I share with my students that I do. Learning never stops. You must be open to that teaching time that comes. And I remember this gentleman. I. I didn't realize I'd do it, but I was still a young guy, you know, and certain things, you know, you'd think, man, this guy's a deacon, and he's a whatever, and he, he's a, and I would, I'd sometimes shake my, shake his hand kind of timid. Have you ever been there before? And I was there, and I'd find myself out of a habit, kind of looking down at my feet. Man, one day at church, he grabbed that hand, pulled that hand. He said, hey, man, you got it. Look me in the eye. Don't look down at your feet. And I, I went, whoa, I think he's mad at me. But then I thought what he meant. There's a lot of practical lesson in that. Because so many times when you're doing that, that's just people skills. That doesn't have anything to do with the gospel today. But I found out this. It gave me an appearance, and he went a long time. He, would, he, he It was wonderful. He's like, man, you got mad at him, didn't you? No, I didn't. I listened to what God shared to him through that instrument. And it was just practical advice. And, and, and I remember that. He'd shake that hand. He said, man, look at me. It was a little strong, but, but I took it. And, and, and the heart of that was help. A lot of times he'd buy me, and I'd just see books come in the mail, and, and, 
and a little 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 envelope with a little paper clip in it that, follow, that my mother followed that trail a little bit sometimes too. But you know what I'm saying in the ministry, a little love offering here and there. But I appreciated all that stuff. But what he would say to me in that, he said, this will lead you. And I got to thinking of that one day. And I was, I was doing a devotion. And I, thought, and I thought, this will fit today in this message. He gave this to me. He said, when you're looking at that, I know that might just be a body habit. But you, don't be ashamed. I mean, look, eyes tell a lot of stuff when you meet people. You know, he was giving me some good people skills. But I didn't want to look down and be timid and do those things. Now, why does this illustration give you today? Many of us act that way when it comes to the gospel. Now, hear me through. Listen to me with a good heart today. We act that way when it comes to the gospel. We will. When we're presenting the power of, with hope for life. So what we're encouraged, now that doesn't mean you ramrod through people now. I, I don't mean that at all. I, I think you know my heart. But we don't have to present the gospel looking down at our feet. You say, preacher, where is this coming from? <laughs> no, are you, are, did something happen? No, no, I'm just saying. That was a good lesson for me in my ministry to look and be strong and have a good appearance and look and share but if we're not careful, we won't say we do that, but we'll do that when it comes to God's Word and being faithful to present the message. Circumstances sometimes are tough. I know it is. That, don't mean you, that doesn't mean you just you have to use the grace that God gives you in those situations. But Paul went into all kinds, didn't he? He landed on, a, he, he landed on an island. Don't think he didn't give the gospel somewhere through that and present the life of Jesus who changed him? Don't you think that Paul didn't go? He was standing to, to religious leaders who you have to remember, Paul was a smart man, wasn't he? But he didn't back down from them using the gospel. So my illustration of that is that little point of the gentleman telling me, look up at me. Let me say to you today, look up. Look up because you have the power. The gospel, it says it is the power, and it is righteous, and it saves. And the Apostle Paul is sharing with the church at Rome something we can get that lesson today. Or at least as we're doing it, we can be renewed in it of the power of the gospel. The power of the gospel. It's not what we build up. It's not what we... Because I'm going to tell you something. If we force the change, they'll turn back. If, they, if we force it and it's done all through the flesh, then it's going to be, the change is not there. The Holy Spirit has to convict using that message we give. And I find, and I, and I went through a little stretch in my life trying to help some other brothers out uh, year, several years ago when they were just like, oh, i got to see the results and i got to be here and I go to the parking lot and there's nobody there. and there's this. You've got to be faithful and you've got to share the word. And the word brings forth. Sometimes we, if we're creating it anyway, then it's going to fail. And ultimately when we're building our kingdom, not the kingdom of, Je of Christ, it's going to fail anyway. Paul wasn't about that. He was about preaching. He said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Wouldn't you think, hey, I, I, I was looking to do everything to kill him. I wanted to bring everything about the church down I could bring, da bring down. But, the, but Jesus changed me. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of that gospel that saved me that can save others and change. Paul gives us that today. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2 for me. Take just a minute and look there too. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2. I appreciate that. And you that are watching, if you find it, if you're watching, have your Bible, God's Word, or if you find it in your on your phone there somewhere, read along with us. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 2. I'm going to read verse 1 to lead in. And so it was with me, brothers and sisters, when I came to you, I did not come to you with eloquence or human wisdom, as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. 
the gospel. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness with great fear and trembling. My message and my preaching were not wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. The summary statements I was making to you led right into this verse. Paul said he was there another occasion, another fellowship, but he said, I am not doing it based on mine. I'm doing it through the power of God. But I'm coming to you with the words of the hope. And that's what he said in 1 Corinthians. We see power in the gospel. So today for a few minutes, I want us to look. Charles Spurgeon said this. Charles Spurgeon said this. Wherever I preach from, I do a beeline to the cross and the power of the resurrection. Now, what is the gospel? The death, the burial, and the resurrection, right? And are we thankful for that? You think of that. Spurgeon said, wherever my messages were, whatever my message is, I do a beeline to the cross. And if our preaching is about anything else as a central focus, then we must reevaluate and share that when I look within at preachers. But that, thing, that, that message that Paul has given is not only for preaching that, but it's sharing to those that you, share, you can have that same responsibility to share the gospel. Let's look just for a few minutes today in the idea of the word power. Now it says here, I'm going to go back to Romans again. Romans chapter 1, our text verse. It said, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew and to the Gentile. Paul said he wasn't ashamed. But that word there is power. Power of God. Power of God. Let's think of that power and just break that word down a little bit today. First of all, you see the P. Paul was a preacher. Okay? Paul was a preacher. He was not ashamed to preach to whatever situation he may have been in. But he didn't come with words of himself. He came with words of the Spirit. And today, I can speak for that from the pulpit side, for me, for myself, and for preachers like me. We must preach with power. And let's look, I'm going to look within first. We must claim that power that's in the gospel and preach that and be faithful to that because the power of God changes. There's a lot of other programs. Now notice this. The preacher's saying that this morning. Programs are, that are not driven by the Spirit of God and for the building of the kingdom. Po programs are just programs. But programs must be driven by the power of God. What is demonstrated through the power of God? The Holy Spirit's leading. And we must be led by the Spirit of God. Preaching. Preach. In that first P, in the power. Preach. You say, well, I'm not a preacher, Brother Mike. Well, we're given the responsibility to share the gospel. And whatever the situation you're given, you know the call that God's placed on your life. But yet he says in our body of Christ, there's those that are feet, and those that are hands, that they all have a part in the body. And so we all have roles to minister. We cannot neglect or turn away from the commandment that's given as Jesus was leaving when he gave, that he said, go into all the world and teach and preach. And it said to everything, and that, that comparison he gave there, was to the local people, the next region, and out into the world. And we must be faithful in that. So when you're writing down any notes today and you want to write down the word power, Paul encouraged the church at Rome to buy the power of God. But when we think of the power, let's think preach. That would be a good first P. The second we see there is O. 
O would be the word opportunity. I can stand here today and share with you the opportunities that, that I have probably missed, not intentionally, but the opportunities that might be right there in front of me that I miss for whatever reason. Not that I don't love the Lord. He's a preacher, but not that I don't love the Lord. Not that I don't, but those things that they're there, let's be encouraged to see the opportunities God gives us, whatever they may be. It, it, it may be it, it, it may be a person that needs to see it, and you may be going in to pay your gas all, pay your gas one day and something, and you have a chance to share with somebody. You may have a person that's there. You may per now that, and I'm not saying that's not purposeful visits. I'm saying there may be those opportunities that God just brings right to you, and you have that privilege to share. And it might be simple as saying, "Look, don't put that at me." Hey, look, look today, that's a gift from God. And and how, how about this? Do you know God? That just transitions really well to that. And if and if they and that offends them, you've done what God told you to do. That's what we have to be back to a little bit in our ministries. Let's do what God tells us to do. God gives us a mission, God's whatever. There's many opportunities that we miss. And I think that O fits well there to look at the opportunity. Paul didn't Paul didn't Paul didn't turn away from anyway to any place, did he? He didn't turn to any place to share the gospel. He was willing to share because he knew it was the power. It was the power of righteousness. So when we see those opportunities that God gives us, let's take them. Let's be open to it. And see what God has for us at that day. And see, now sometimes we run ahead of God, don't we? We do that. We've all been guilty of that. But God gives us those doors sometimes that we miss for whatever reason. It may be looking into the needs that we have. It may be the, the schedules we have. It may be the time frame. It may be that I'm not able to reach in a way, and I'm, I'm praying for people, and I'm praying for others that do it. That's not what I'm talking about. That's different because your heart is still there for the gospel. But I'm talking about those that are out and we meet. And we, there's a lot of those things that, that we just need to kind of be, I don't want to say the word convicted, but yet I guess it would be, you know, look, man, we, there was a chance right there. There was a deal to say, Lord, you gave me an opportunity to witness to someone, and I missed it. It could have been out of fear. It could have been out of situations. It's that other person's job to do that. But yet it's every Christian's job to share the gospel. I, and I say that with love and encouragement, but it is every person's, not job, but ministry to share the gospel. So whatever opportunity that we have, let's be faithful to do that. And they come in all kinds of ways, don't they? Sometimes we want the opportunities to share God's love in the way we draw them up. You know what I mean? We draw them up this way, and then that works good, you know. But yet sometimes it's the person that's not exactly what you think is what you should share. Or it might be the fact that it might be, you know, we want to go and, and some people would look to the comparison of, and from the scriptures, the lovely and the unlovely. We don't do it just because we don't really mean to say it, but by our actions, we'd rather be over here ministering with the lovely and not the unlovely. Because sometimes that's kind of, you know, over here they're fixed, kind of. You know, they're already, <laughs> you know what I mean. But sometimes you got to reach that and show them the gospel, and the gospel changes. See, the gospel changes. We're already talking about it this morning. The power of God that changes. Power of God unto righteousness. So, so let's, let's just take a little encouragement today from this little prostate and look at the word O, our power, and take the word O and say, the opportunities, Lord, you give me. And someday, I, I've talked to many, I've had this experience in my life, to say, Lord, give me an opportunity today to win somebody to the Lord. Has that always occurred? I've always been blessed with that? No. But it doesn't change that that is a desire and a prayer to be faithful to win people to the Lord. Paul was. Paul shared the gospel to the Jew first and also to the Greek. It says Greek, but that's Gentile. Number three, 
You see power there, the word witness. And we've already kind of covered this today. But just to reemphasize the W, let's be witnesses. And we can be witnesses with our walk. We can be witnesses with our ways. And we can be witnesses with our words. But one thing Paul tells us and shares, he was a witness. And he lived that life out because of what God. He said the love of Christ moved him. It constrained him. He loved the Lord. Jesus had changed him. And he wanted to witness of that wonderful truth. And we're given that word to be witnesses to him. I love the old song uh, that we used to do in choral arrangements. It was called Simply Witnesses. And it would repeat, Witnesses. And then it would go into a little part, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and had this big finish. And I remember that hearing that word witnesses over and over again growing up. I thought, and I knew right where the verse came. Y'all know where it comes from. And it says we're to be witnesses. And we can't ignore that responsibility and what God has for us. Not only the P being preach, the O being opportunity, the, the W being witness, number four, the E is eternity. The power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. First to the Jew, and then to the Gentile. For the gospel of righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. The power in the gospel, the gospel is the hope for eternity. What is the gospel? Paul said in another verse, the death, burial, and resurrection. We're seeing today, he's not ashamed of that gospel. But that gospel changes eternity. Those who believe in the death, the burial, and resurrection, Jesus Christ, will have eternity with him. Those who choose not to believe in him will have eternity separated. So I think that E fits well. Because the gospel changes. The gospel changes for our life, but the gospel changes for eternity. Because there's no hope without Jesus. And I know I preached that in recent weeks, and, and, and with no apology, in the sense that that truth is somewhat softened today. But there's no hope without Jesus. There's no hope. Our hope is in Him. And we must continue to be faithful to share that message our etern the eternity, the eternity is what you do with Jesus. As we shared a couple of weeks ago, what difference does it make? Jesus. Eternity. The gospel. Paul was changed. He saw Jesus on that road, didn't he? And Jesus said, hey, why you persecute me? He knew who he was. That gospel changed him. The gospel changes lives. It changes lives for the walks here, but it changes lives for eternity. Should we not respond to that and take that opportunities and responsibilities to share, to see change? If we've been changed and we're so thankful for that, and I'm thankful for that, for the salvation in Christ, but let me share to see others brought into the kingdom. So we see eternity. Then the last word, the R, is righteousness. Righteousness. It says it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to Jew and to the Gentile, for in the gospel the righteousness of God is revealed. The righteousness of God is revealed. When a person experiences that belief in Jesus, immediately at that salvation, at the salvation of that individual, the righteousness of God dwells within him. Now, is his salvation for future time complete? Hear me all the way through and don't hear part of this because you say that means salvation is in stages. Salvation will, his eternal salvation will be there. But he is positionally in Christ when he trusts in him. 
He does not become perfect. But the righteousness of God instantly dwells within that person. That man or woman who trusts in Jesus Christ, the righteousness of God, says he adopts you into the beloved. The gospel changes. There is salvation in none other but Christ. And you see that the righteousness of God, he said the righteousness of God is exhibited here in the gospel. So how can I be ashamed of the gospel of Christ as I preach it and see change and see the righteousness of God? How can I be ashamed of the gospel? The righteousness of God. When a person experiences and believes the gospel, then that person is the righteousness of God living within them. Do they become perfect? No. Are we moving toward that point? That word sanctification we all kind of stray away from, but you're being set apart, and you're being set apart, and you're continually being set apart. Corinthians says if you're in Christ, what does it say? You are a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. New what? Righteous of God. Evil of the world. Righteous of God. Someone says, how's the world treating you? Some of the old folks say, the world treats me bad. Because <laughs> it is, and why? Because the system of the world is of the devil. Somebody said, well, under the circumstances. We, gotta get out of the, we, we need to get them circumstances off, don't we? I know, we're all under that. I know that. I say that with some humor. But at the same time, we live with the power. We as believers have the power. And we need to be faithful to continue. Paul encourages us in this verse, as he gave the lead-in chapter to Romans, as he said, I want to be there with you. But I'm not able to be there with you, but I want to give you some stuff. And one of them, not stuff, I want to give you some things that are good for you. I want to give you some things of encouragement. Do you not think there's some wonderful intent by Paul to say in those opening comments, as he said, I'm going to give you these words. Then he said, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. Because right after that, if you'll look in your scriptures, right after that, the context changes. And in the book of Romans, in chapter 1, it talks about God's wrath against humanity. It's many verses there that talks about God's wrath against humanity. So Paul's going to express those things. But prior to expressing those things, as God looks upon the depravity of man, he wants to say the gospel presents hope. And I am not ashamed. I'm going to preach it because it brings change. It's the power unto God to righteousness. In closing, Paul was not ashamed of the gospel. He knew the gospel was powerful. He also knew it was for everyone. And lastly, he knew it was for the Jew first and to the Gentile. Paul was the missionary. Paul was a missionary to the Gentiles. And we're so thankful for that, that ministry that he gave and the continuance of the gospel, which he was not ashamed. The gospel changed. We believe we are saved through the presentation of the death, the burial, and resurrection, that belief that we have and that confession that Jesus Christ is Lord. Let's do as Paul did as we close. Let's take the encouragement that Paul gives us. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. An artist years ago sang a beautiful, beautiful song, and it was entitled, For I am not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. And the words of that song rang through really a personal testimony, almost of commitment and devotion to say, I'm not. Wherever I go, whether it's the valleys, whether it's the hills, whatever it is in the struggles, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. You know, God, Jesus wasn't ashamed of us. He went to the cross. He died for us. Our sins were upon him. And while we walk this journey, let's not be ashamed of him. And let's share that wonderful gospel because the gospel produces change. Let's be faithful in doing that. Let's not be ashamed of the gospel. Paul taught the church that. And today, the message today is, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Let's take that truth from Paul and live it out. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for the privilege to share today. Thank you for that, the power that you 
give to us, Lord, in living for you. And Lord, we thank you for the power that's in the gospel. Let's take the opportunities you give for us. Let us know, and the word there was preach, but let us teach and share as we should do as believers. Let us see the opportunities you open for us. Let us be witnesses because this gospel changes and eternity is determined by choices. Lord, choices in you. Lord, I pray that you'll help us to fully realize, Lord, that there is righteousness, Lord, in the gospel. And Lord, let's, let's be testimonies of that. And as Paul encourages today, in a day when there may not be by our statements, but many times, if we're truly honest, we will appear uh, frightful, uh, almost stepping back at times. But let's use the opportunities you give for us. Stand in the truth. Stand with grace. But let's be faithful and share. Encourage us today with your word that will not be ashamed of the gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.